It's pretty interesting. The all decade teams for each of the major league teams. Huh. That gives me a good idea. Okay, guys, I just ordered a um, little Caesars, $6.49. It's uh, 49 cents worth of ingredients coming our way. Are you excited? I am. But, I mean, what do we do until then? What do you think? Really? You think so? Do you think we could do it? Hmm. You know what? That is a good, that's a good point. That's a good point. You're right. So, okay, Mass didn't have anything released really officially over the past decade, right? I can't do an all decade thing with official releases. Ow, that hurt, buddy. <laughs> um, but there have been things over the past decade that I have loved with mask and we're going to go over that together and well before i do that i'm gonna get these guys out of here because i'm pretty sure he's just gonna keep keep bite me so give me one second Whew, this guys are a handful they're they're pretty good co-hosts sometimes other times they just want to eat your fingers it's a whole thing um i have a union grievance with them it's it's really really a mess here but i do want to dig in to things that i have actually enjoyed with mask over the past decade now for most of this list some of you might not know that some of these things have occurred where i've kind of been in the middle of a lot of things mask related so I want to so want to recap it. It's a, it's a long decade. And to be fair, my timing might be off a little bit here and there, but let's dig into it. This list is in no particular order because I don't really I don't really have an order with it. I, I've done, you know, top 10s and you know, you know tier list before, but See, the thing with this particular topic, it's, it's very special to me, and I hope it's special to you. Now, what we have is we have a community that kind of keeps us going, right? And 
one of the things that I've found to be one of my favorite things over the past decade is all of the the Facebook groups that have popped up. There's a ton of them. And as I'm talking here, I can't list them all out, but when I edit, I'm gonna try to get the links in here. There's so many of them right now, and they're active. While, you know, websites themselves are kind of, you know, there's not really message boards anymore. There's not really, it's not really that aspect. But the, the, the Facebook groups, especially because Facebook's catered to our age bracket, old, um, there's a lot of them on there. And it's, it's such a great thing to see. I, I have two. I have one for the face, you know, the Facebook page for the website itself that kind of took over as the message board. And um, for those wondering, I am still working on re um, re uploading that database from the old message boards as kind of an archive. It's been a really terrible process. Um, I'll have more updates on that as time passes, but uh, we have the one for the website and we also have a toy collector one that if you, you know, basically just got to answer a few little questions and you jump in and join in. It's not just toy collecting. It's a talking mask. Um, but you'll find some good deals in there and people are, it's very active and it's, it's fun to see. It's fun to see that aspect where we're not getting anything from the official release things, I guess you would, I, I don't know how to describe it to be honest, but the communities themselves have been something that I've loved interacting with and just jumping in and talking with everybody. And I, I hope there's more to grow. I hope more pops up. There, there's probably some out there I don't even know about. And that's a good thing because I just want to keep it, I want to keep it going. That's one thing over the past decade that I've loved about Mask. I hope you would you know, have the same uh, kind of uh, feelings I do there. I can't really talk about the communities without mentioning, uh, I guess we'll call them sister sites, agentsofmass.com, which used to be Mass the Movie, and boulderhill.net. Um, Jason, Wyatt, and Eric, they've been, all right, so, It's a weird dynamic that competing, well, not really competing, but like websites about the same thing kind of interact. It's not something that I was ever used to, but the, the friendships that I forged out of this with those guys, especially Jason and Wyatt, which we get to do RetroCon together. It, it's, I, I love the fact that there's somebody else out there trying as hard as I am to keep mask alive. And I just, I just hope that everything that they're doing and everything that they've done that you appreciate, and I hope you love it as much as I do. There's things that they write about that I don't write about. They have pictures that I don't have. It's such a cool dynamic where everything just kind of goes together. And I look forward to continuing working with those guys. I, I, you know, we do the behind the mask with them a few times and that'll be a later topic in this episode, but it's, it's such a fun thing to do. And I, I just love talking to them, love hanging out with them. And I wish we could do it more. So Eric, I know you're on the West coast. Um, and Jason, you got, you're a little more South, right? Um, I'm not saying New Jersey's great, but maybe you guys should move here. We can really start an empire. So, um, but thank you guys for for being there and being the the great people that you are. And I hope to continue working with you over God the next couple of decades. Let's see what happens. Speaking of retrocon, Tony. You, um, you fulfilled a dream that I had that I didn't even know I had to begin with. 
when you had Doug Stone as a guest and you asked myself and Agents of Mass, Jason and Wyatt to do a panel for Mask, I didn't know how to feel about that. I had either overly joyous or overly, overly joyous. I was between the two. It was such a defining moment in my life to sit on stage with not only a great actor, but a great human being with Doug Stone and talk mask. I was, when he actually was doing the show, I was, um, was three. Do you wear diapers until you're three? I don't even know. But that's, I was three years old. And it just, it captured me. And, you know, hearkening back, like Jason and Wyatt, we, we collaborated together on what we would do. Like, it was such a fun process. And the end result, I wish we had better video, but the end result in my mind it's one, it said, it's one of the defining moments of my life. I'm sitting on a stage talking about something that I hold dear with somebody that I hold in such high regard that it's just, it's like, it's like a total, like, you know, mind blowing thing. And Doug, I, we've done a couple episodes together. We've talked off and on and your love of hockey, even better the the voice actors that I've gotten to talk to kind of span maybe a little bit more than a decade uh, the voice actors and people that worked on the show uh, you know your your life went on the show did what it did and your life went on but you you found enough time in your life to indulge a giant nerd of me talk mask and I hope we can do it again I really hope we can do something where we get a round table together through you know the internet and we can just talk about your experiences on it talk about how you know how the recording process went for you guys talk about what happened you know, during the show after the show and how the writing actually worked. We, we talked with Mel Gilden before and a couple of the other writers and they're, they're very, they're, they're great. Gina Bacar, S.S. Wilson. I, you're in, you're in an entertainment business. Your career has kept going, but you stopped, you stopped enough time and gave enough time to talk to me. And I'm always going to be eternally grateful for that. Um, and not to mention, the, one of the, the, the best things that ever happened on the website, talking to Larry Leon, he was the uh, vocalist for the theme song. It, there's little things like that you don't think about. You don't think about that little thing where he recorded his vocals for something, right? And what, when you think of mask, you think of what? Matt Tracker, right? You think of Thunderhawk, maybe the Spectrum Mast, if your memory's there. But you remember that theme song. You remember, like, it's, it's catchy as hell. The lyrics make no sense. I fully admit it. But, I mean, Larry, I... I think I think you and I could do like a whole podcast together, just like a whole show, like just talking random things. Like, I, like you're such a you're such a great guy. You're you're very down to earth, and you're very humble, and I appreciated that. And I hope we can do get to talk again about mask and your adventures with it. But yeah, it the, the, you know the cast itself it it span maybe spanned a little bit over ten years, but you know, the last decade, but the, it's it just, it, it, man, I, I just, I just love it so much. I love that they're, 
I love that they're surprised at the fandom. I love that they are open to talk about whatever they can remember, not hold back. And I'm, I'm always going to be grateful. And thank you again to everybody. Um, Brendan, Sharon, Mark, um, Brennan, uh, Graham, Doug, and I hope I didn't leave anybody off. There, I mean, I've, I've talked to so many people over the years, and thank you very much for, for doing that. I'm just thinking, sorry, I'm just thinking back to the, um, some of the conversation I had with Doug, and uh, one, one of the things that was really cool, if, I don't, if you watched the, uh, the Kitty Bungalow charity event uh, video that I did, that Doug is uh, a chairperson for, I was stuck in traffic on I-95. If you're familiar with the Philadelphia area, you know that I-95 sucks ass, and um, you're usually going to be stuck there for a you know, half hour at least, right, in the same position. I had asked Doug, I was like, Doug, would you mind doing like a recording for the website, like welcoming people to it? Obliged took, you know, I gave him a couple words to write, you know, say. And I was sitting in traffic. I got an email from him. So an email from like your childhood hero is not, it's already great, right? But then you listen to it and I'm listening to it. I didn't have a uh, Bluetooth connected to my phone or my car yet. So I'm listening to it through the phone and standstill traffic. And I, I didn't care that I was in traffic. That's the magic of mask. So it's, it's got that, that staying power, right? Not as much as G.I. Joe Transformers, He-Man and Ninja Turtles, but we're gonna change that. If you haven't already read Mask 85, Carol Wack, as he's known to our community, did a four issue comic based off of the original character designs with his own story. Four parts. You can read it on matchtracker.com or agesofmasks.com. Brian, you you came out of nowhere, and the fact that number one you were brave enough to put me in your comics and also draw me as a mask agent without your computer blowing up—that's brave. But your passion, and I, I, I just can't I can't thank you enough. Your passion, whether you love it or not. You made so many people happy. And you and I, we have that same artist feel where we do something and we're not fully happy with it. And we tinker and tinker and tinker. But what you have done, you have, you've taken something that needed to be, you know, it needed to happen and made it happen. And I'm, I'm going to be eternally grateful for that. Even though I'm a Phillies fan, we're, we're still going to talk. I'm going to have you back on uh, Behind the Mask. And we did an episode of that a little while ago, if you want to check that out. It was a great, it was a great interview. We talked about, we talked about teeth. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's something that you really need to, to, to you know, listen to. You don't have to watch it because we're both hideous looking. Sorry, Brian. You know it's true, but it's a it's a great listen, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did uh, recording it with Brian. So again, thank you. I can't wait for Mask eighty six. Um, I've already seen some of your advanced imaging of it, and I'm I'm ecstatic about it. I I, I can't wait to see it. So we'll see what happens. Now, many of you might be down on the IDW comic that came out because it took 
elements that you loved as a child and change them. Most notably, the races and ethnicities of some of the characters. If that bothers you, you have to get over that because it's 2019 and I'm sorry to say this, but we're all equal. You can't, you can't just like look at something that was from the past and think that because it was that way and because you have maybe misguided morals that you think it should be that way too. That's life. And the sooner you cope with that, the sooner we can keep going. I've talked about this before, and it does bother me that there is a you know, contingency of people out there that were bothered by Matt being African American, um, you know, changing Gloria's ethnicity. Like it, it's. It's a society thing. I can't. That's a whole other episode. I'm not going to go into that much detail. But Brandon, Tony, IDW, thank you for doing what you did. Tony, thank you for doing the custom artwork for the website. Um, I love it. It's up on the banner, and I have it, I have it back there. Yeah, right there. I said, hey, Tony. Uh, I was just curious if, you know, would you mind doing a Thunderhawk with Matt? Like, you know, jumping out of it or something? A couple days later, send me that. And, that. and that's the beauty of Mask. It's that I think it, I think it makes people so happy that they're just, they just want to jump into it. But Brandon Easton, I haven't had the opportunity or the pleasure to actually talk with you, but your, your writing I, I did enjoy it a lot. And I, I wish that I wish that the series could have continued further because I think the direction and everything that you guys were doing, I, I was I was hoping to have it keep growing. And I would love to be able to talk to you one day on here too. Same thing with you, Tony. Um so let me know if you want to do that. Get that together. The IDW iteration. While it was only uh, ten epi uh, episodes, ten issues, it's worth reading, worth picking up, and there's all these kind of crossovers too. So uh, with GI Joe, Rom, and so on, and we got a figure out of it too. We had the um, Comic Con. It was like a five pack of the crossover figures together, and you got a match tracker figure out of it. So you can find those for like thirty bucks on eBay. If you just want to buy the one instead of buying the whole set, it's worth having. Uh, I highly recommend it, to be honest. If I told you that in 2019, there would be like, I don't know, I, I don't know how many people are doing customs right now. There's a lot. There's so many custom figures, custom vehicles being released, being sold. I, I love that so much where we have, whether it's something that's, you know, kind of hand built, something that's done with like a 3D printer and, and it's just like the craftsmanship of the people that are able to paint these things. The problem with these customs is that I don't really know the people's names. They they tend to want to be kind of kind of like a silent silent entity, really. But you know who you are, and keep doing what you're doing because I'll eventually be able to afford <laughs> um, some of the things that you're able to put together. But thank you to anybody that's sent me things over the years that have sent me videos of their creations, uh, have, have offered to like paint things for me because I can't keep my hands steady. 
your your contributions are not overlooked and whether you're doing a custom piece that sells for eight dollars or eight thousand dollars i hope you keep what you're doing what you're doing and i hope it continues and one day when my uh my son will be born at the end of january when he moves out maybe he becomes like uh a doctor right away i don't know i'll be able to afford it then right and i'm not saying it's overpriced that's not what i'm saying it's worth every penny i just have to be able to afford it so um so thank you for all that and i'll close with this i've been doing this behind the mask series for a little while now and it's been interesting because I, I kind of jumped into it. I didn't really know what I was doing. But as I've kind of progressed, I've learned a little bit and I've taken in your constructive criticism and people have helped me with things. I, I think that, I think we're on the right track here. I think that releasing episodes like this, doing tour reviews, episode reviews, just silly things in general. That's what I want to do with this channel. And if you watch State of the Channel a couple of episodes ago with that whole COPPA thing and all that stuff, I'm not monetized. So I would love it if I was, if you want to watch, that's what I need. I need the watch hours, so feel free. There's a couple of playlists you can watch. But I'm not monetized. And, if, and I set my channel to these are not meant for kids, even though I talk about toys. Um, so that kind of would factor into advertising and searchability and things like that um if this platform became inoperable essentially i have other options to go with and i would keep going because i have fun doing this i have fun talking about masks i have fun looking over at this figure you know shelf here that i have and i have fun talking about the weird stuff that i find like the met you know the misc set up there and that's not even all of them. They came individual too. Who does that? Oh, and I also need you to tell me what I should put in this empty spot here. Put your ideas in the comments. So yeah, that's for me, like out of the past decade or so, give or take, that's what I, I, I love the most. And I hope that, I hope that what I'm doing here I hope that I hope it brings you some joy. I hope it brings you a little entertainment. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not the most entertaining person in the world, right? But I try to I try to talk to you as I would want a fan to talk to me. And I just want to keep it going. So until next time. This is Bill from MattTracker.com. And just in case we don't do another video beforehand, I have my holiday sweater on. This is what I usually wear for the Christmas parties at work. Have a happy holiday, and I'll talk to you later.